What's up everyone? We are back with a bit of a hunter guide. Yeah, we're going to be continuing on. Um, last few days I've been concentrating more on Demon Souls. I don't know, I just felt like playing Demon Souls more uh, than this game, but I'm ready to jump back. No hard feelings against this game. We need to take out a gaping dragon. Actually, before we take out a gaping dragon, we might as well uh, take out what's his name? Spiky armor dude. Uh, or is that spiky armor chick? There used to be a theory that uh, this is a she. Night Kirk. Yeah, right. Night Kirk. That's the name, right? I think so. Not that I need anything he has to offer. Yeah, Kirk. Kirk Hammond from Metallica. Where does fool spawn from? Okay. Time for some parries. It would be kind of pointless to use my bow and arrow here, but I'm gonna do it. Before somebody says... Use your bow, asshole. I'm using it. This guy is a fat roller too. Which is his mistake. Thinking he can fat roll against me. Thinking he's not gonna get parried. I'm all about them parries. And let's just, you know, get this over with. I wonder what he's gonna drop. I got the weapon. I do like this weapon. Uh, you guys know. You guys know I've used this weapon before. Um, it's a fun one, actually. With straight swords being as powerful they, as they are, this one is kind of a good middle ground. It's not as like horribly OP as some of the other ones. Yeah, anyways, let's get to the Gaping Dragon. I'm just trying to speed things up here because we need to get to Blight Town as well. Uh, I want to start making some progress here uh, with the game. <laughs> it's so ridiculous, that little head that pops up. Oh man. By the way, I know what everybody's gonna be like buzzing about in the comments. It's the Elden Ring. Uh, well, there was a network test and a longer like gameplay reveal. Uh, and probably people are going to be jumping on me asking what my thoughts are. So let's discuss. As we fight a fat-ass dragon, let's discuss Elden Ring a l little bit. Uh, it's looking good. It's looking really good. The thing that people are shitting on is probably the thing that appeals to me is that the color palette of the game is very Dark Souls 2-ish and what I mean by that is the game kinda has that like uh, more sort of bright look, bright fantasy look people hate that but you know me, I'm a Dark Souls 2 man, uh, so that that has my interest peaked. What is kind of be a little bit weird, and you know, people are also pointing this out, is that there are a lot of reused animations in that game. Uh, like, from what you can see, oh, you can hit him like this, you don't even have to manually aim. Yeah, there's like a surprising... I noticed it too in the gameplay reveal. And you know, with the game coming out in February, it's not like a placeholder thing either. Uh, those, I think those animations are here to stay. Uh, but there is a lot of like reused shit, which is a bit strange. Uh, the one thing I'm hoping for with the game is that it's not gonna be just Dark Souls 3.5, you know. Uh, I mean Dark Souls 3 in general um, I really kind of am hoping the game will have its own identity aside from just it plays like Dark Souls 2 but there's a horse in it 
and it's open world. Well, we'll see, we'll see. It looks, the game looks good. Oh, shit. I'm gonna definitely play day one. My biggest, you know, like, fear slash hurdle that I'm fucking not even gonna be able to get a PS5 until then has been solved because I'm playing this on PS5 right now, so... Other than that, I'm okay, you know. You know, I tend to like Souls games and FromSoft games, so... Even if it's just like a good Dark Souls-ish game, I'm gonna be happy. I'm gonna be a happy boy. I do like the like kind of horse mechanics from what they've showed in that you can like jump from it and it's like fall damage with the horse especially is not an issue because that was one of my concerns like how are they going to handle fall damage and I do like that the stealth mechanics are back you know I like me some stealth uh, I'm a stealth man even in Sekiro so I already have some build ideas for Elden Ring eventually. Anyways, let's not get ahead of ourselves. You know, anything could happen until then. But we are as close to Elden Ring as we've ever been. How about that? I shot him with an arrow. That's how I killed him. Yeah, that's the gaping dragon. Not much more you can say. 25k souls too. So let's just move our ass back to the bonfire. Oh shit. I should go and start upgrading my stuff. Really? But... Fucking hell is it far away or what? Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if I have the... If I'm in the mood to go back to like Andre. Okay, what should we level up here? Uh, that's quite a bit. So, you know what? We're gonna put a point into endurance and... Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. That still leaves us with 6k and I'm gonna check if I have... I'm not exactly hot on upgrade materials, but... I might just go the back way into Blight Town. Which means we're gonna be going back there anyways, so I can go and upgrade a little bit. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Oh yeah, and I knew there was something here. Um, which I forgot to pick up. Which is a key item for this playthrough. And that's the Heavy Crossbow. So the Heavy Crossbow is a bit heavier than your normal crossbow, as you can see. But it is a fair bit more powerful. Believe me, if you were to play a crossbow only challenge run, uh, like somebody sitting in front of your screen has done, I definitely re like recommend using the heavy crossbow until you can get Avalyn. Uh, because the heavy crossbow has quite a bit of power. Yeah, that's just it. Am I gonna use it on this playthrough? Absolutely fucking lutely not. It's terrible if you already have the stats to use bow and arrows. I mentioned this at the start. This pretty much goes for any crossbow. Maybe except the Avalyn because it's unique. And see, this is why you upgrade your decks, boys. Uh, I wasn't one-shotting these guys before and now I am. And there is good reason for that. It's because the short bow has S scaling with decks. So that's why I prefer, aside from the speed, I prefer it for the longbow. Uh, there are very few actual instances where you really need to shoot for long distances. And the shortbow with its increased scaling, I think is a bit better of a choice until we get the composite bow. Oh yeah, these guys are here. I haven't even talked to Petrus. Uh, I don't even know if I want to do this. This is such a, like, boring-ass character. Well, actually, he's not, but... 
those three definitely are. It was a pleasure. Awfully raggedy. Cool. We exhausted all the dialogue options. Let's move on. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, give him the large amber, obviously, but let's just check what we can do here. So to upgrade the scimitar, we need two shards and probably two shards for the short bow as well. I think I do have the cash, the capita. I do. Maybe we can even get both of these to plus five. That wouldn't hurt. Uh, but then you need three. So what I'd rather do is let's buy two more. Get the bow up. And then we need six. So I can purchase three. And I definitely have enough consumables. Definitely, definitely. What did I say? Hell yeah. You actually probably need a little bit more to have cash to actually upgrade the weapon as well. That would get, be good. Plus five for both of these. And this stage should be... Yeah, enough to get us through. Blight Town, definitely. And then I can even ascend one of these. The question is, which one should we go for? I'm gonna definitely go for the Scimitar. Uh, I'm going for... As I said, you guys convinced me. Quelag's Fury Sword. And Quelag's Fury Sword can be made from a plus 10 Scimitar, so we're all Gucci on that front. Okay, we are way better equipped. Let's start heading to Blight Town. See, the thing is, one of the things people suggested is that I should use some pyromancies. Uh, and I'm honestly not sure. I'm not sure at this point uh, whether I want to use any type of magic, since it does make the game very easy. But you know what? I'll at least pick up the pyromancy flame. Not sure I'm going to use it. Not sure I am going to invest the stats into attunement and shit, but it's worth a try. Oh yeah, about you. I almost forgot. Should I do the quest? Screw it. I haven't done the quest in such a long time. I think the last one was Daughters of Ash. Or of ash and dust, uh, because they very cleverly moved Lotrek here, so you can't kick him off. Yeah. Anyways, now that we're heading into Blight Town through the back alley, we can just consider. I could go for the Red Tear Stone. I mean, I have a free ring slot and I need to like get some better armor set because this is some yee ass armor sets here to quote Lamar GTA 5 man that GTA definitive edition um it's looking good I have all the games anyways on PC but some of the like quality of life changes for that game look pretty good. Yeah, let's pick up the red tear stone, why not? They look pretty good. The only thing is that I can't help feel, you know, like as someone who grew up with the three like OG GTA games, three Vice City and San Andreas, looking at the remasters or remakes or definitive editions, whatever you want to call it, to me it, just, it always just looks like modded games you know like if you put some some like mods over that shit that's what it looks like to me um you know how you can get those like high def uh texture packs and everything for san andreas and vice city and all that that's what that fucking definitive edition looks like 
I don't know, man. The thing I'm worried about is the Vice City soundtrack, whether they're able to still have all the songs, because some of the licenses on that have probably ex expired already. And that would really suck, because... The soundtrack is what makes Vice City Vice City, at least in my opinion. It's one of the things that sucked about my playthrough. I enjoyed the game a lot. I am down to play Vice City anytime. But the pure fact that I couldn't turn on the radio absolutely sucked. Um, so who doesn't want to jam out to some 80s hits? And like really 80s hits. They have, like, excellent song selection in that game. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. If nothing else, the promise of playing... Where the fuck did it go? What the hell? Does he... That's really strange. I did not know he disappeared. Interesting, because probably I never wore back here, like, at this stage of the game. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say, if nothing else, the prospect of having all the GTAs available on Switch, portable, is really good, because... The last portable Grand Theft Auto I played, and I know the games are out on, like, iOS and Android as well, the last portable GTAs I played were the Stories games. Liberty City Stories and Vice City Stories. Both of which are kind of shamefully not included in the Definitive Edition. Z. Both of those games are really good. Like Liberty City Stories especially, I think, is really good. Because the setting of Liberty City is cool. And... It's just kind of a shame that 3's story is, you know, kind of generic, or like, not even generic. Oh, fucking hell. Am I about to die from these guys? Not even generic, it's just, you know, they're still kind of working out what the hell to do. Um, you know, silent protagonist and all that. But stories makes up for it because... Same setting, but it actually has a plot. Ah well, it's not in, it's not in. And Vice City Stories was cool as well. Really like a testament to creativity in those games. Like, when I was a kid, those maps Vice City especially, the map felt huge. Uh, like, it felt like an adventure just going through one of the islands. And now you look at it now, compare it to GTA 5 or something. Or one of, like, Forza Horizons maps or something. And it's just absolutely tiny. Probably compared to the Elden Ring map, it's tiny. But the way the layout is, and, like, how well it's designed... It really seems bigger than it actually is. Oh, fucking hell. It's not good. That's not good. Uh, I assume I do not have... No, I don't. God, this sucks. Getting the toxic status is the worst thing. And I had the means or had the means to... You know what? We're gonna do a reset here. Fuck it. Oh, he's back. Cool. He has some dialogue that I've never heard because, again, I never bothered to do this. bit of foreshadowing anybody whose laugh starts with K anybody who, whose laugh starts with K is not a person you should trust 
Anyways, let's try and get back and do this properly this time around. Okay, here we go. No fuck-ups this time around. As in, I'm really gonna try... Not getting hit by a toxic dart. See? They wanna hit me with a toxic dart. But it ain't gonna happen. Oh god, fucking hell. It's gonna... <laughs> well, we're accurate at least. Oh yeah? Oh yeah? I don't think so, bitch. Fuck. This thing spawns so quickly. Yeah, you have to be careful with these toxic dart assholes because... Uh, nice. At least we have the heal now. Like, they shoot very quickly. And it's not exactly... The best idea to get hit by them. See, there's another one. Just shooting away. Fuck you. Weirdly, it doesn't do any, like, actual hit stun or damage. So, once you're toxic and you have the heal, you might as well snipe these fuckers. Uh, and then do some proper inventory management. And I think there's even another, blah, uh, even another one here. It's a mouthful. Here? And there's a little fucker. With some interesting physics. Come on. Terrible. I mean, listen, I'm gonna use it. I don't think we're gonna encounter any more of these guys. But that's annoying. But that's how you have a little ranged battle in this game. Please tell me that's that's not, not even all of them. <sighs> One of the most hated enemies in this game. I mean, Toxin in this game is absolutely god-awful, too. Like, it's not surprising these guys are not exactly the most liked. And this, boys, is why you have ranged attacks. No, don't waste the... Fuck. I'm trying not to waste the feather arrows, but I'm doing it. Because I'm an idiot. Listen, a Firekeeper Soul is worth it. Definitely worth it. Let's do another damage comparison. Okay, that still does more, but it's two hits either way. No, don't worry, I'm never going to use uh, Feather Arrows. They're not that good compared to how expensive they are. Really standard poison. We have lightning. Wait, do we have lightning arrows? Just fire arrows, right? But standard the poison ones and all that, that's all you need. These like feather and the heavy arrows and all that are not really necessary. The properties they have are very minimal in terms of difference. Like once you have a shit ton of souls, it doesn't matter, but we are very far away from that. Shit, look at the time. I do have quite a bit to cut out from this episode, but I thought I'd be able to make a bit more progress down here I mean, partially it's understandable because I had to like warp back twice and like run all over the place and shit but still I'll go on a little bit longer we have Mildred 
to take care of for sure. What up, Mildred? Holy shit, that's quite a bit of damage. Bow and arrow PvP. Why the hell does that make that sound, that shield? It's a wooden shield, boy. It shouldn't make that sound. She's gonna like, keep running. <laughs> well, she pretty much killed herself there, partially. That wasn't the smartest PvPing, Mildred. I'm a little bit disappointed, if I'm gonna be honest. She's just three humanities and of course the butcher knife. And 15k souls altogether. Uh, so if there was ever a place to kindle, it would be this one. And we are also going to level up. Dex and strength. Go for that. And I don't even know. I know we have large shards here, which I sort of desperately need. Holy shit, is my poison resistance terrible or what? Yeah, that's not the best. I mean, we'll survive, but still. Summer is shitty, poison resist. I'm really hoping Elden Ring doesn't have an area like this. I think if collectively what the Souls community has gotten tired of over the years for sure is annoying poison swamp areas. We don't want them. We don't want another annoying poison swamp area, which means Elden Ring 100% will have an annoying poison swamp area. Like, I bet dollars on it at this point. I mean, they all have it. Dark Souls 3 has a stupid swamp. Dark Souls 2 especially, where like poison is really annoyingly strong. This game, we don't have to talk about this game because we all know what's up. So yeah. Fuck, am I going to get the server? I'm just gonna cut to getting the server, because... Hey, that's exactly what I don't want. Actually, that can be broken down... But not into large shards, right? I don't know, man. Fuck, it's not what I want. Anyways, let's just cut to the server. Okay, here we go. And is the server an absolutely useless fucking weapon? I don't know if you would call it useless, but for this playthrough it sure as shit is. So I'm not going to be using it. But what's going to be happening is I'm going to be wrapping up this episode of the Ultimate Hunter's Guide. Another episode done, more progress is made. Here we are in Blight Town. Next time we're going to do Quelag, of course, and ring the second bell of awakening. And then we can move on to more exciting pastures or something like that anyways yeah we'll wrap it up here thank you guys very much for watching if you did enjoy this episode of the hunter guide make sure to give it a like subscribe uh what else post notifications so you know when i'm posting and that's about it take care peace out and goodbye